now it's our um, uh, 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 um, duty kind of thing it's to go back to South Sudan so we can start helping these people. We become, you know, uh, we become leaders. You know, try to go back so we can be part of rebuilding. So, and then Joseph, he got his, uh, uh, you know, he's a medical doctor right now, and he's in Sudan also. So it's very cool. So they, so from, you know, the reason why is that, you know, uh, I had to tell you if them, like what they're currently doing now, because, if, you know, sometimes for many Im immigrant refugees, when they come, you know, their dream they set up, it's always, you know, there's an obstacle here. There's some other, but, we feel we went through so many obstacles, so the obstacle can that can be facing us if because if we don't know the language, it's not the obstacle enough. It's not excuse. So they actually uh, a lot of people sometimes don't always make it because it's overwhelming when you come to the new place. So you, first of all, you don't speak the language, you know, and there's so many other, uh, uh, you know, you know other stuff. So when I left my village, I was seven year old. So uh, you can imagine, um, just, just I remember we were out in the field watching cattle. So we grew up in, in, the, in, in little art houses uh, in the village of southern Sudan. Um, so I'd never been to even a town. I remember, I don't have no clothes. We used just, you know, you know, we go to the field naked, you know. The little boy just running with butt naked, you know. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, we go up uh, after cattle. We separate the uh, cow in our culture. It's a very, uh, you know, it's a very important significant. Uh, as a young boy, that's your job. So you, you know, we, you didn't get to go to school unless if you, you are in the big city or in the town or whatever. Which is, I was not. Um, so when the village was struck, I just left the cow. To actually, save some of our life a lot. You know, I just left the cow there and then we just start running away from the village. So everybody has who were in the village about the family and all this, so many of them uh, didn't get to, to, to make it out. And those who did survive, um, they even, uh, uh, they, either they were, you know, it, you know, they were taken by the, by the soldier or they were killed and, and get raped, especially uh, uh, some of the young girl and all stuff. So, and I just kept walking until we get into Ethiopia, the border. And then eventually, there was a camp there in Ethiopia. This was like 1987. So, uh, you know, you can imagine. It's like, uh, we, our walk, I start with like maybe 500 people. And it's only like 20 of us left by the time we get to the religious camp in, you know, in Ethiopia. So, uh, not only just the enemy, they was shooting and whatever, but also we were facing with all the wild animals in the, the middle of jungle of, of Africa. So they walk, they, you, you know, we facing from, you know, you know, from lion to whatever. Uh, and then, uh, not only just that, also starvation. So for those who cannot make it to walk sometimes, so probably the oldest person was 11. Think about that. You guys probably have a granddaughter or a daughter, it's 11 year old. So they carry a five year old in their neck. So because uh, either they leave them behind, which is some, some of us left behind, and then just the, you know, you know, the animal food. So um, we get to become uh, a really desperate by the time we get into the camp. The camp couldn't. Not only did we get to the camp, but there's no food. I mean, you can just <laughs> uh, talk about everything. It is, it, thing can go wrong, you know, when you, in, in very much human life, you know. So. Um, we, we, so I get to stay in that refugee camp for almost until 1991, from 87 to 91. So the civil war broke out in Ethiopia again. So they have their own civil war, what's going on. Even though we run from the our war, they have their war. Now we get kicked out <laughs> again. So we have to run. So by that time, probably maybe I was 11 or so. So we went back to Sudan and nothing was really going on, you know, very much in Sudan. So we decided to walk right back again, even though we get kicked out, kind of legally, we have to do our you know, way to survive. So we eventually, um, I eventually get to, uh, uh, went to the border of Kenya, 
And that's what eventually we were able to go to the camp. And then able to eventually come to the United States. So the process is kind of what you guys see in here a little bit. So the, the, every year the United States government, they decided where the heart of the war are in the each country. So which the president of the United States was signed, how many refugees will come over to the states? So from the 1990s until 2000, there were Sudanese, so it was us. So we actually, we have a, uh, probably over 25,000 Sudanese get to come to the United States. And then later on, there's more, but at one time, there was the most resettlement agency that the United States, in the, in the immigrant history, coming in at one time. So we were more, you know. So of course, we all went to different city, like you guys see in here, everybody going. But I came in 1995, so I was one of the first one to get, you know, to get to come to the state. So before a mass people come in one time, you know, that was, you know, uh, so called the lost boy, now we've met, now they've met, you, you know. So back then they were, we were young boys, but now they've met. Uh, so we had, uh, at the single largest time, we had uh, between 2001 until like, uh, 05 or so, we have about 3,800 young men get to come in one time, and only 39 girls get to come by themselves to the United States. So part of that is that uh, some of the girls, actually, many of them was raped and taken as slave uh, for the soldier in the North, North Sudan. And then some of them get to come, uh, uh, those who do survive, they have to stay with their uh, either their uncle or aunt, you know, so they, so they kind of clad them as they were bringing everybody has from the camp. Um, so I, when I first came, didn't get to speak in a word of English. So I could, like, you remember, I never been even to, to first grade or to, you know. So, uh, and that's what you see in here, many of these guys, they speak English very good, because they, they actually get to stay in the camp for almost 12 years before they get to come to the United States. So by then, the camp was getting better a little bit, so they were teaching them a little bit English. So that's why you can actually understand them very well. But when I first came, I couldn't speak in a word of English. I never been to even, so I didn't even know how to wrote my own name, and, you know, at that time, when I first came to the United States. And dropped from, from uh, camp in Kenya, called Dada. You know, recently, this, uh, this camp was in the news recently, not too long ago, for Somalian kids. They couldn't have food, no food in there, you know. That's the camp I was in in Kenya. So that there was a whole bunch of mass uh, until now. Actually, it's going. It's been the world, you know. I know sometimes they don't show a lot of world news and stuff here, but uh, it's actually on CNN a lot of time. Uh, for uh, many, they were they have like probably like forty thousand kids. They are coming into this camp that I was in. There's no food right now for them to eat. Many of them are just dying. They just bury kids every day. 